It's Math 142. We're going to start digging into some of these um, tools that we can use to relate different angles to each other. And the first ones we're going to look at are called the sum and difference formulas. And now these formulas help us get at exact values of things and show us relationships. So, for example, if I want cosine, the exact value of cosine of pi over 12, well, it doesn't, it's not on my unit circle, right? Like I can get the exact value of cosine of pi over 3, cosine's width, it's 1 half. Or sine of pi over 3, that's height, uh, the y value, it's root 3 over 2. But notice things like pi over 12, 7 pi over 12, they're not on here. But what's convenient is I can actually make these from these. In other words, this, this pi over 12, this pi over 12, what I notice is it is the same as what? Pi over 4 minus pi over 6. Right? Like think about these. If, if these were both in terms of 12s, this would be 3 twelfths, and this would be 2 twelfths. Right? So 3 of them minus 2 of them is 1 of them, 1 pi over 12. So and the nice thing about seeing the pi over 4 and the pi over 6 is I know exact values of those, pi over 4 and pi over 6. Or the 7 pi over 12, that can be built up uh, pi over 3 plus pi over 4. Think about them both in terms of 12s. This is uh, 4 pi over 12. This is 3 pi over 12. That adds to 7 pi over 12. Now, it's not as easy as just going cosine of pi over 4 minus cosine of pi over 6. Like, that's not going to get me my answer. Um, if I think about pi over 12, it's about here, right? So it's not just this minus that. Um, but there is a way to get there. And uh, what we're going to use, we're going to use a, for, a couple formulas uh, to break up cosine if we have addition, right, sum or difference or subtracting of the angles, and same with sine. And so what I'm going to do right now is a little bit of a proof. So I'm going to show you where it comes from, and then I'm going to show you how to use it. So I basically want to say cosine of some angle minus some other angle. And I want to know what that is the same as. How do I, how do I break that up? And so let me get a picture sketched here. Some angle alpha and some angle beta. And what I want you to notice is like those radii are the same length. I'm just going to fix that like that. And notice if I had this is some angle alpha right here, this is some angle beta right here. I'll clean this up a little bit. Um, inside the two of them, that is my angle alpha minus beta. And what I could do is I could take this whole thing and just kind of turn it, like, like keep these distances uh, intact, but turn it and rotate it so that this lines up with the x-axis. So basically, I have this alpha minus beta in here. And that's the same like, and let's just make this distance 1, right? Let's just put it in the unit circle. So notice what I did was I just took this and I rotated it down like this. Okay, uh, this is all going to be proof. This isn't anything that I'm going to ask you to, uh, to replicate, but I want you to see where it comes from. Now, notice if I connect these, these lines, right, if I go from like here to here and here to here, those distances should be the same because all I did was rotate it. So that distance is equal to that distance. All right, so there's some big, big pieces for me to consider. So over here, let me think about where these points are at. So this point right here that rotated by beta, well, I know that if I went uh, cosine of beta, that would give me the x part of this point, and sine of beta would give me the y part of that point. Similarly, since this rotation is alpha, I could get that point by saying uh, cosine of alpha is the x part, sine of alpha, uh, alpha is the y part. So um, thinking about that, I'm going to use this information to get a, an equation for the distance for that line uh, d1, that how long that distance is. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So if I just have two points in space, 
I'll just say x1, y1, x2, y2. I can get that distance by using the Pythagorean theorem, right? This length squared plus this length squared equals that length squared. And what's nice about it is since this is an up-down motion in here, this is just a change in y, right? Change in y. And change in y is the y part minus the y part. So y1 minus y2. And then this is just change in x. So it's that minus that, x1 minus x2. And so then this would be the square root of this side squared plus this side squared. And that's how I can get the distance between two points. So with this distance one, my change in um, my change in x is cosine minus cosine, right? Like this distance right here is cosine alpha, because that's where it is here, and cosine beta. That's my change in x, and my change in y is the difference between the sine values. Now this distance two. Since this right here is just one away from, so this is the point one zero. And this point right here would be, well, the x part is cosine of the angle. Cosine of, well, the angle is alpha minus beta. And the y part is sine of that angle. So if I think about that distance right there, to get this distance right here, right, I've got change in y and change in x. So my change in x is cosine of this minus 1. There's my change in x squared plus my change in y squared. Well, it's from sine of that down to 0. So it's basically sine of that minus 0. So I'll just say sine squared of alpha minus beta. Ooh wee So that's just getting these distances. So this is this distance, this is this distance, and I know those distances are equal to each other. So let me write that out. Distance one equals distance two. So square root of, all right. So since these are equal to each other, if I square both sides, the square root's gone. So I know that that is true. Now I've got to square some things. So if I square this, cosine of alpha minus cosine of beta squared, that's it times itself, right? So I've got cosine of alpha minus cosine of beta times cosine of alpha minus cosine of beta. So I'm going to distribute to everything to everything. And what I end up with, cosine squared alpha minus two of these cosine alpha times cosine betas. And then a negative cosine times a negative cosine is a positive cosine squared. So that's just this part. And then if I multiply this part out, um, if you'll trust me, I end up with all of that. And now let me clean this up a little bit. Cosine squared of an angle plus sine squared of that same angle is 1. Okay, so that's a 1. Cosine squared of an angle plus sine squared of the same angle is a 1. So I've got 1 plus 1 is 2. And then I've got this piece left over and this piece left over. They're still there. So let me combine. Uh, I can't combine those. Just write them. All right. So that is the left-hand side as far as I can go with the left-hand side. So now let's take a look at the right-hand side. I'll clean this up a little bit. Have a little space. Okay. If I square this thing, just like before, times itself, I end up with that. And then this sine squared is just what it is, so plus sine squared. Just like before, cosine squared plus sine squared at the same angle is 1. So these two make a 1. I combine those two ones to get a 2. And then I've got that part left over. I notice I could subtract 2 from both sides. So let me do that. Minus 2, minus 2. I also notice everything's divisible by negative 2. So if I divide this by negative 2, it leaves me cosine of alpha minus beta. Divide this by negative 2, it leaves me a positive 1. Divide this by negative 2, it leaves me a positive 1. And actually, here's my relationship, because I was looking for a way to break up cosine of alpha minus beta, and this is how I do it. If I know cosine and sine of both these angles, 
I can go cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle plus, notice it's the opposite operator, this was minus, sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. That gives me a formula, and that is actually a difference formula for cosine. So if I go back to this right here, if I want to find an exact value for cosine of pi over 12, I'm going to, I'm going to break it up into pieces I know, both sine and cosine of, and then use that formula. And get that formula written up here. So again, it's cosine of the first one, cosine of the second one. Opposite operator, this is minus, so I'm going to say plus. Sine of the first one, sine of the second. So this cosine, pi over 4 minus pi over 6, uh, think of pi over 4 as the alpha and pi over 6 as the beta. So I can rewrite this as Cool. And now I, I know these values. So let me look them up. Cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 6, pi over 6, cosine is x, so root 3 over 2. Notice what I'm doing is I'm multiplying those ratios together, right? Like I plug pi over 4 into cosine, it gives me that value. Sine of pi over 4 is also root 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So root 2 times root 3 is root 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Root 2 times 1 is root 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So notice uh, I have some fractions to add together. We have a, the same denominator, so I can write this as root 6 plus root 2. I can't go any further than that over 4. That is an exact value for uh, cosine of pi over 12. So check this out. Uh, this is how I can check it. So first off, I'm going to make sure I'm in radians. I am. Cosine of pi over 12 gives me that. So how about this? Is this the same as that? Notice I'm really careful with my parentheses here. But they're the same. So th that's a good way to check if your answer is right or not. You know, you have this calculator. Why not use it? So let's expand this thing about uh, this, this difference for cosine. Um, notice I was real careful about saying opposite operator, right? If this is minus, this is plus. Well, that's true no matter what. So one way that you'll see this written is this symbol will be written as a plus minus, and then this symbol will be written as a minus plus. And when it's written that way, that shows that they're opposites from each other. And for the sine uh, relationship, I'm just going to, I'm not going to go through the whole proof for it. I'm just going to show you what it is. So sine alpha plus or minus beta is, so the way that I read this is sine of an angle plus or minus an, another angle is sine of the first angle sine times cosine of the second angle. Notice they're different for sine. Same operator, plus or minus, plus or minus. Cosine of the, uh, cosine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. And I'm not going to go through the proof. You can get to the sine one by substituting in. We, well, we know that um, cosine of pi minus an angle. Sorry, pi over 2 minus an angle is the same as sine of, of the angle. You can do some substitution into, into this one to get that one. But those are the two relationships. So let's use the sine one to think about what sine of 7 pi over 12 would be? Well, we broke it up into things that we know sine and cosine for, pi over 3, pi over 4. So then now we can use this formula to do that expansion. These are things to know. Um, write them down, just keep referring back to them consistently, and then you'll know them. So it's sine of the first one times cosine of the second one. Same operator, so this is plus, so that'll be plus. And then cosine of the first one, sine of the second one. And then from here, it's figure out what these values are, and then do some arithmetic. So let's see, sine of pi over 3, sine is height, root 3 over 2. I wrote pi over 2, this should have been a pi over 4, sorry about that. Uh, cosine of pi over 4 is uh, root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And if I multiply that, I get root 6 over 4 plus root 2 over 4. So I can say this is root 
6 plus root 2 over 4, which, uh, strangely enough, ended up being the same value as the other one. But that is okay. Uh, that is it right there. There are some rules like this for tangent as well. Uh, and there's two, two ways to think about this. One of them is you know that tangent um, of an angle is sine over cosine. So if you've already done this work for sine and cosine of the angle, you can just use those answers and plug them in. Um, if you haven't done the work for sine and cosine already and you want to use the tangent relationships, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to write them on here. Here it is, and I would, I would read this one as tangent of an, L, um, an angle plus or minus another angle is tangent of the first, same operator, tangent of the second, divided by one opposite operator, tangent of the first times tangent of the second. And we'll do some practice with, with each of these. So with each of these relationships, if we know the angle, the, the trick is just to think about how could we break it up, right? Like if I said I wanted sine of 15 degrees, I'm going to look at my unit circle and think about, is there a way I could make 15 degrees? And I see it as 45 minus 30. So I would say, well, that's the same as sine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. And then now that I've broken it up so that I have angles that I know the values of sine and cosine for, then I could use this relationship right here to expand it, right? Sine of 45, cosine of 30, same operator, so minus cosine of 45, sine of 30, evaluate them and I'm on my way. Um, one thing that you might want to think about, particularly when dealing with um, radians, is find a common denominator, right? Like if it's if it's something pi over 12, think about how you can make 12s out of these sixes, fours, and threes, right? Like like turn everything into terms of 12s and then try and build it build it that way. Now sometimes we don't actually know the angle, but we know some things about the angles that we're adding together. Here's an example like that. So we're given this information, we're given this sine of an angle is three fifths, and that angle is between zero and pi over two. And then cosine of that, and we're given some things about where beta is at as well. And then we're asked to find sine of alpha plus beta and so on. Now, we don't need to actually find the measure of the angle to figure these out, because we know that if we wanna find sine of alpha plus beta, we all we need to know is what sine of alpha uh, and beta and cosine of alpha and beta are and then we're good to go. So let's let's do a little sketch here to help. So we know that sine of alpha is three-fifths and we know that alpha is between zero and pi over two. So zero is here, pi over two is here. So it's somewhere in this quadrant. The other thing I know about sine, you know, opposite over hypotenuse, right? Or height over radius. So this is two sides of what I can think of as this triangle, I use Pythagorean theorem to get that. It's going to end up being 4, right? Square root of 5 squared minus 3 squared. So this is 4. Be really careful about direction here. This is in a positive direction, so this is positive 4. So I know that sine of alpha, I know its value is 3 fifths. That was given to me. Um, and then I knew what quadrant it terminated in. So I could figure out what cosine of that as well would be. That'd be four fifth, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. And I can do the same thing with beta. Beta is between pi and three pi over two. Well, pi is here, three pi over two is here. So beta gets down into that third quadrant. And it tells me cosine is negative five over 13. So this distance right here is negative 5, and this is a 13. So I've got that triangle right there. Pythagorean theorem, 13 squared plus negative 5 squared. That should give me what? 12. So I know that this equals 12. Now again, I have to be really careful with direction. This is going down. So my y value is actually negative 12, right? Not just 12. That is where people will miss 
uh, this type of problem, is forgetting about the direction. So I know that sine then of beta is negative 12 thirteenths. And I know that cosine of beta is negative 5 thirteenths. I have all my pieces now. I know all of those. And just, just for the record, I also know tangent, right? Tangent of alpha is 3 fourths. Tangent of beta is, well, they're both negative, so negative 12 over negative 5. Y over x, rise over run 12 fifths. All right, so then from here, do these. Sine of alpha plus beta. Well, I know that sine of alpha plus beta, I can expand it using this relationship. It's sine of the first one, cosine of the second one, same operator, so plus, cosine of the first one, cosine of the second. I'm sorry, sine of the second one. All right, so now notice, I don't know the actual measures of those angles. But I don't need them because I know that sine of alpha is equal to 3 fifths. So I'm just going to substitute this in there now. So 3 fifths times cosine of beta is negative 5 thirteenths plus cosine of alpha 4 fifths, sine of beta negative 12 thirteenths. And then it's just arithmetic, right? I just need to multiply some stuff out to get there. Um, now you can do it by hand. Just so, just so you know, um, you know, you have to, you're supposed to have this calculator. So here's a good way to use this. Uh, so I've got three fifths, negative five thirteenths, plus uh, four fifths times negative twelve thirteenths. Now, if I just hit enter, it's going to give me this this fraction. I'm sorry, this decimal, which is kind of a pain. But what's nice is if you go into the math menu and choose this first option. It means give me the answer as a fraction. So I hit enter, brings that command up to the menu. Give me the last answer as a fraction, and I know that it is negative 63 65 And as I go to do these other ones, um, cosine of alpha plus beta, I'm going to expand it out with this one. Right, So it's that. So let me plug in those values. Cosine of alpha. 4 fifths. Cosine of beta is negative 5 thirteenths. And now since that's plus, this is opposite, right? That should be a minus then. Minus sine of alpha, sine of beta. And again, I can put that in my calculator. Sixteen sixty-fifths. Now these tangent ones al for alpha plus beta. I've already done it for sine and cosine for alpha plus beta. I know tangent is sine over cosine. So how about I take the sine value and I say that divided by the cosine value. And what I like uh, here. What I like here is that um, I'm dividing negative 63 60 fifths by 16 60 fifths. 60 fifths divide out. It leaves me negative 63 over 16. Another way to think about that is when you divide by fractions, you can multiply by the reciprocal, which you're dividing by, which divides out. Now, if I want to find tangent of alpha minus beta here, I haven't done the work for alpha minus beta. Right? I haven't done the sine and the cosine work. So what I'm going to have to do here then is use this formula. So let me grab this just so I have it right here. So I know that tangent of alpha minus beta is tangent of alpha, same operator. So this will be uh, tangent of the first one minus tangent of the second one over one and then minus plus on this one it switches so since that's minus it becomes plus tangent of the first one times tangent of the second. so as i take a look at this i know that tangent of alpha is three-fourths tangent of beta is 12 fifths so i'm going to plug those in so i've got 
3 fourths minus 12 fifths over 1 plus them multiplied together. And uh, depending on how comfortable you are with fractions, you can do it by hand, or you maybe do piece a piece at a time on your calculator. Something like uh, 3 fourths minus 12 fifths. Give me that answer as a fraction negative 33 twentieths over 1 plus 3 fourths times 4. 14 fifths. And then you can do that division. You know, if you did this by hand too, that 14 fifths, you would, you would write it as, uh, it would end up being 56 twentieths. You'd see that as well, and you'd see how your 20s will, will divide out. You're going to end up with negative 33 over 50. But let me do that on the calculator and see what happens. We are there. So one last thing that I just want to show as well, with, back with these relationships. Um, and I want to get at something that we said earlier, was that sine is the same as... Uh, cosine of, of 90 degrees or pi over 2 minus that same angle. Remember, this is the complementary sign, cosine. That's why it's called cosine. Complementary angle. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So let's, let's prove that. So if I have cosine of pi over 2 minus theta, well, that's a difference formula. So it's cosine of something minus something else. So I could expand this out into... Cosine of the first one times cosine of the second one. Uh, opposite operator, right? This is minus, so that's going to be plus. Sine of the first one, sine of the second one. And some of these I can evaluate. Cosine of pi over 2, pi over 2 straight up, right? It has zero width there, so that's zero. So zero times cosine. Plus, and sine of pi over 2 straight up is at 1. And hopefully you can see how that's equal to sine theta. All right. Hey, these are take a bit of work, particularly when you're doing this type of problem. Pay really careful attention to the sign, S-I-G-N, of the values. The direction is very important. Sketch them. That's why you're given this information. Give them a try. Send me questions. Message me or post them in the forums.